Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Throwback Thursday. This is actually the second Throwback Thursday that I've recorded today. I just opened a box of 2001 tops looking for each row's rookie card. Um, and uh, man, was it a disaster. You will only see that video on Patreon, so I'm not going to release it here on the main channel. So we're doing take two. This is going to be a box of 94 Upper Deck. This is Series 2. You can see Kirby Puckett is on the front of this box. I've never opened 94 Upper Deck on the channel, so I figured I'd give it a shot. I picked up this box for 22 bucks at the old Honey Hole about a year or two ago, and it's just been sitting um, in storage here along with a couple other boxes, and I eventually figured I'd get to it, and today's the day, 1994 Upper Deck. Let's check these out. I used to love Upper Deck as a kid. Big, big fan. I feel like my favorite all-time Upper Deck set was actually 1993 Upper Deck. I was crazy about 93 Upper Deck. I probably have, like, as a kid, I had, like, probably two or 3,000 1993 Upper Deck. I also like 94 Upper Deck. Now, there's 270 total cards in Series 2. Series 1 is a bit better because it has the Michael Jordan rookie card and the A-Rod rookie card in there as well. But there's some nice rookies in this one. There's a, an A-Rod card here we'll be looking for. Lots of Hall of Famers. Let's go ahead and rip right into this. 12 cards per pack. Every card features, they have all this like uh, fancy talk, like UV coating, full bleed photos, foil stamping, holographic enhancement. That was kind of like their way of putting them um, above the rest of the game, uh, the rest of the companies at the time that were producing cards. Upper Deck kind of stood apart as kind of like the leader in baseball card technology it all started with 1989 upper deck and they kind of revolutionized the card industry with that release so let's go ahead and open these and see what we can find hopefully we find some inserts there's the odds right there you can see there's some tough odds there for some of those a trade card or 720 um we've got baseball here's one in 20 electric diamond there's one in every pack so let's see what we've got hopefully they're not bricking up I do not need any breaking up. We've got a Herbert Perry leading things off, and we have a Hector Carrasco. One thing about Upper Deck that I never understand is why do they flip the cards every which way? It's kind of annoying. There's a nice Ken Griffey Jr. home field advantage card. That's a nice one. I like the kid. I'm going to put that one down on the screen. Greg Vaughn. We've got one of my favorite players right there, Barry Bonds, making a catch out there in left field. I always loved Barry Bonds growing up. And, um, I mean, I grew up near Pittsburgh. I watched Barry Bonds play as a kid, and I always thought I always admired his speed and power. There's Carl Tuffy Rhodes, who did literally nothing in the major leagues, and then he went over to Japan and became Babe Ruth. Look, five career home runs and 280 at-bats. He goes over to Japan and clubs like 50 dingers a year over there. It was an absolute beast. This is the Electric Diamond, one in every pack, kind of a cool card right there. We've got Kevin Brown, who would go on to win the World Series in 19, what was it, 1997 with the Marlins, and Bobby Munoz, the last one. So pack number one is in the books. There are 36 total packs in this box. Looking for Hall of Famers. We have a Nafi Perez, who was a nice slick fielding shortstop. Not much bad, despite playing Colorado. Latroy Hawkins played for a very long time. Ellis Burks had a nice long career as well. There's a Derek May. Greg McMichael, former reliever there for the uh, Bravos. Gary Sheffield may get into the Hall of Fame someday. He's uh, picking up a little bit of support. Mark Lemke. We've got Otis Nixon, nice speedy leadoff hitter there. Jeff Juden was a nice flamethrowing prospect. Kind of flamed out, though. We've got Doug Jones, former closer there. I remember him with the Indians, mostly. Doug Jones always had a very nice mustache. All right, here's our next pack. We've got Joey Cora, Pirates third base coach there. There's Kurt Abbott turning two. We've got a Matt Brunson, one of these top prospect cards. And we also have an Upper Deck Classic Alumni, 1990. Um, who's this? Pablo Alvarez, don't even remember him whatsoever. Must not have made too much of a mark, but this guy did. Luke Whitaker had a very nice career. A lot of people think that he should be in the Hall of Fame right alongside Alan Trammell. A nice Jim Tomey electric diamond card. He's a Hall of Famer, of course. There's Derek Bell. Mitch Williams gave up the walk-off home run to Joe Carter in the 1993 World Series. And Mickey Mantle, Triple Crown season, 1956. A very nice card right there. I uh, love that card a lot. Mickey Mantle, one of my favorites. I PC his cards. I don't have many of them, but I do have some. Joey Cor and Sean Barry are the last ones. Next pack up, we've got Melito Perez on the back. We've got a Charles Johnson, nice defensive catcher there. We've got two of them, so that's 
pretty nice if you love Charles Johnson. We've got a Don Mattingly home field advantage card. And here is a Mark Lewis electric diamond. One in every pack. That was kind of like the... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if 1994 was the kickoff of like the insert craze or not. It might have started a little bit before that. Um, all throughout the mid 90s, everybody was about inserts. I remember buying packs and just getting so stoked if I found an insert card and then grabbing the Beckett magazine and seeing how much it was worth. So, Brad Fulmer, there's one in every pack. Kind of, I guess, started with Topps Gold. Uh, what was it? Was it 1992? They started putting Topps Gold in every pack. Maybe it was 93. I know they had Topps Gold in 92. I just can't remember if they came in every pack or not. There's Dennis Eckersley, Hall of Famer. Juan Guzman with a huge glove. If you want a gimmick to get a ball, that's a great gimmick. I've seen some guys go around to different ballparks, and they will just uh, have a giant oversized glove, and then they'll ask for a ball. And players will actually throw them balls just to see if they can catch it with that huge glove. Eddie Murray, Hall of Famer in his Cleveland Indians uniform there. It kind of looks a little strange. I always remember him as a Baltimore Oriole. Got Tim Wallach on the back. On the front, we've got Joey Hamilton from the Padres. Derek Lee, D. Lee, top prospect card. That's, uh, I believe, considered his rookie card. He had a nice, long career. Terry Mulholland from Uniontown, Pennsylvania. Threw a no-hitter in the majors. There's Dante Bichette. Looks like he just flipped the bat down and is watching the ball. He always had a nice little discard of the bat whenever he'd hit a home run. There's Craig Biggio, Hall of Famer right there. Derek Bell. Man, we hated Derek Bell in Pittsburgh. There's Don Slot. We love Don Slot in Pittsburgh. Why do we hate Derek Bell? Well, we signed him as a free agent in 2001, and he was terrible. And then he went into Operation – he literally called it Operation Shutdown. He, like, refused to play for the Pirates, and he lived out on a houseboat on the Allegheny River. And, uh, yeah, that guy – he never played baseball again after that. And um, Pirates had some bad luck with free agents there for a long time. Another Derek Lee. D. Lee, he played for the Pirates near the end of his career. There's Armando Reynoso getting a base running card there, kind of rare for a pitcher. Randy Tomlin used to like him as a kid, had a nasty changeup. Greg Vaughn, Vaughn's Valley, he had some good, good years. I believe he had a, a lot of years with plus 30 home runs, at least a few years. You can see he has a 30 home run season there in 93, and I think he had a couple more seasons in the mid-90s. Charles Nagy. We've got Barry Larkin, Hall of Famer, Electric Diamond card, 1995 MVP, and also... A Hall of Famer and John Valentine. John Valentine sliding in right there. All right, next pack. Let's see what we can find in this one. If you want to check out that Patreon only video, it's uh it's cringy. <laughs> but you can watch it if you're a Patreon member. It's three dollars per month to be a Patreon member and uh get you access to all of our breaks. And I can actually sell the stuff for cheaper on Patreon than I would if I'd have to sell them on eBay. I always use the example because of the round numbers, the math is easy. There's Chuck Finley playing electric guitar and a bat, making a guitar face as well. That's pretty awesome. Um, but if I was selling a $100 break on eBay, I'd have to sell it for $110, whereas on Patreon it would be $100. So I'm, you're saving $10 uh, right there. There's Frank Thomas, the Big Hurt. He is a Hall of Famer, one of my favorites from this era. I remember seeing him in the 1994 Home Run Derby at Three River Stadium. I was seated in the upper deck thinking there was literally no chance of me getting a ball, so I, I don't even think I brought my glove. And then Frank Thomas uh, put one up there, like a section over from me. It was absolutely amazing. Will Clark, he was also in that 1990. I think he might have been. He was in the 94 All-Star Game. I don't know if he was in the Home Run Derby or not. There's John Franco. Graham Lloyd from Down Under from Australia. Larry Walker getting the eye black applied there. Hall of Famer. He'll be, uh, he was elected, but his induction has been delayed along with Derek Jeter till probably next year. Arrestus Destrade, former Bucko. He's one that went over to Japan for a few years. You can see he left the big leagues 88 Came back in 93, and uh, I guess he was pretty good over in Japan. It's always interesting how some players find success when they go overseas. We got a Henry Rodriguez. He was a power hitter for the Expos there for a while. We've got Nafi Perez again. We've got Diamond Debuts of Hector Carrasco, second time seeing that card. There's a Big Hurt Frank Thomas, home field advantage card. Cecil Fielder is another guy, Electric Diamond, home field advantage, who went to Japan, came back, became a big-time star. Ken Caminetti, former MVP right there, unfortunately died very, very young. Unfortunately, a steroid user. Sean Dunstan. And we've got Jim Abbott, one of the most amazing guys around to ever play the game. Jim Abbott completely missing his right hand. And uh, was able to be a very effective pitcher for a long time in the big leagues, even throwing a no-hitter with the Yankees, which is um, just the, the pinnacle of his career for sure. So I, I feel like he's a great, great story for anybody that has any kind of hardship. Just look at Jim Abbott. 
Jason Giambi, back with the A's before he got super huge. And there's a Barry Bonds electric diamond card. I love that one a lot. I'm putting it on the screen. I guess I should probably have been putting some other cards on the screen as well, but I was just talking so much, kind of getting lost in the cards that I forgot to. There's Eric Hansen. I used to like him as a kid because his, he spelled his name the same way that I do. Joe Gray, good old Bernard Gilkey, almost blending in with the bat rack there. Dave Weathers, David Hulse, Dave Weathers' son, Ryan Weathers, is a big leaguer now. I actually got a ball from Ryan Weathers when he was like 10 years old. Just a little kid out there in Cincinnati Reds in uniform with his dad, probably like 2008. Maybe he was even younger than that. Um, there's Shannon Stewart. We've got a Herbert Perry. There's Hojo, Howard Johnson. We used to hate him as a kid. He was There was Paul Molitor, Hall of Famer. He was on the New York Mets. And, of course, the Mets and Pirates didn't like each other. Another Hall of Famer, Robbie Alomar. The Mets beat out the Buccos in 1988. They won the NL East. The Buccos came in second. It seemed like there was always bad blood between those teams. There's Pedro J. Martinez. Why the J? They used to have another player in the big leagues. He played for the Padres. He was a little, little known pitcher called Pedro A. Martinez. So they used their middle initials, I guess, to differentiate between the two. But Pedro A. Martinez faded into uh, obscurity about a year or two later. And then after that, he was always just Pedro Martinez. So um, every now and then you'll hear myself or maybe my brother refer to him as Pedro J. There's Kyle Ripken Jr. signing autographs at Camden Yards. We've got Sean Green and a Michael Jordan Central Region SP card. That's pretty cool. Was not expecting to find this. I have no idea what this could be worth. Uh, let me look at Beckett and see. Michael Jordan, I don't know if this what the heck we've got here. And um, I do have a... Uh, a Beckett next to me just for um, the purposes of looking up certain cards. Literally, no, I don't see this one anywhere. So I'm not sure if this is worth a lot of money or not. It was only available in the central region. They did different region of boxes back in 94. They had like an eastern region, a western re region. So a Michael Jordan 94 SP. That's a pretty sick pull right there. I liked it a lot. Wouldn't get a PSA 10. little ding on the top of that one. But a great card and a great pull right there. As soon as this video is over, I'm going to go check that one out and see what that's worth. Sandy Alomar Jr., nice card right there. Good old Sandy Alomar. He was a hot card back in 1989, of course. There's Chan Ho Park. He was another guy who played for the Pirates for like a year near the end of his career. Ryan Hancock. We've got a Bill Wegman. Tom Hankey, former closer there for the Jays. Benito Santiago, former um, Rookie of the Year. Greg Maddox, Hall of Famer right there. I love Greg Maddox. Got to get him on the screen, I feel like. Daryl Kyle. Fortunately, he was a guy that passed away suddenly in his sleep on the road during the baseball season from a heart attack. Very, very sad. Kurt Schilling, you'll likely see him in the Hall of Fame. Won a World Series with three different teams. He's really, really close. He's up, up over 70%. You need 75% to get in. I feel like this year's the year that Kurt finally gets in. There's Alex Ochoa. Used to be a top prospect back in the day. And I used to really love William Van Landingham as a kid because I thought his name was ridiculously long and that kind of was, like, unique. Of course, he uh, played for a little while but never really made too much of himself in the big leagues. There's Paul Mulder Electric Diamond Card, which is a nice one. Bob Tewksbury, Pat Mears. We've got El Presidente, Denny Martinez, and Andre Scalaraga, the big cat, along with a Mike Moore. Looks like uh, experimenting with... Maybe a fork ball. Next pack up. We're about halfway through the box. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Really appreciate it. I hope that you'll hit the subscribe button if you're new here. Would love to have you along. Just wrapped up our giveaway, our 75K giveaway. Giving away, uh, giving away a bunch of stuff. Se actually, 79 total prizes. You can check out if you won that. Charlie Huff batting. Looks like he, had, he, had, he wants no part of batting at all. <laughs> Charlie Huff, uh, who perpetually looked like he was about 70 years old in every single one of his baseball cards Todd Zill, Billy Hatcher and Dave Hollins but yeah I would love to have you as a subscriber make sure you hit that subscribe button also tap that notification bell look at this one Derek Jeter that's a nice card right there Derek Jeter top prospect card love that card a lot so some nice cards today from this 94 upper deck box Derek Jeter rookie card, of course, is 1993. So that's not his rookie, but it's a nice one. There's an Ozzie Smith. He's a Hall of Famer. Mike Piazza's a Hall of Famer as well. Making a weird, weird face right there. Um, I don't even know if he has control of the ball right there. I guess he does. For a second there, I thought that bat was the, the ball coming out of his glove. Maybe it 
knock the wind out of him there or something. There's Mike Gallego getting up, making the catch. Jack McDowell had a nice career. Unfortunately, I always remember Jack McDowell for one moment in his career where he walked off the field. I think it was at Yankee Stadium. And um, just flipped the entire crowd off. Literally extended his middle finger to the crowd. And uh, I believe he was with the Yankees then, maybe. And not a great way to get yourself beloved in New York. There's Doug Drabick. He used to love Doug as a... Why is he in... Why, do they, why the heck do they have him batting? Looks like Doug's being real sneaky there. He's got a... He's faking out the camera guy, and he knows it. Uh, talking to... Frank DePino, former major league pitcher for about 10 years there. He said he would always kind of try to get one over on the photographers as well and do something kind of weird. There's Oral Hershiser Electric Diamond. He said he was featured in one car with the first baseman's glove on. That was just his subtle way of just kind of protesting having to have your picture taken. Another Derek Jeter. So two Derek Jeter prospect cards. That's pretty awesome. We'll take those. There's Cal Eldred, Pete Smith. We've got a Bobby Bow. Oh, Bobby Bow's happy because he gets $1 million every July 1st. Um, yeah, his agent made a good deal. Deferred a lot of his contract. And um, I think it might have only been like 4 or $5 million that was deferred or whatever. But with interest and everything, now it's, it comes out to like $30 million. I think for 30 years he gets $1 million every July 1st. So very smart job there by his agent. There's Paul Molitor sliding in there. We've got Carl Tuffy Rhodes once more and Kevin Brown. Starting to see some repeats now. Mel Rojas, he had a son. I believe his name was Mel Rojas Jr. in the Pirates organization. Never really made it to the, never made it to the big leagues that I know of. We had high hopes for him for a little while. There's a nice Johnny Damon before the hair. Nice card right there. Johnny Damon prospect card. Let's get that one on the screen. I like that one. I, used to, I think I used to have that one as a kid and I thought it was awesome. There's Cal Ripken Jr. again. Brett Saberhagen. There's Jeff Bagwell, Hall of Famer. We've got a Mickey Mantle. It's a Mickey Mantle, 1957, his second consecutive MVP. I believe he, one of those years, I think it might have been 56, he beat out Ted Williams by like just a couple votes, and that was because some people really hated Ted Williams and put him like ninth and tenth on their MVP ballot. If they would have just ranked him like second or third, um, Ted Williams would have won that MVP, but Mantle definitely had a great season in 56, winning the Triple Crown. What else do we have here? There is a Preston Wilson. Used to be a hot prospect back in the day. Paul Shuey. We've got Moise Salou. There's Felix Fermin, light-hitting shortstop, former Bucca right there. Chuck Finley with the guitar face again. Juan Guzman, electric diamond. There's an Anthony Young. Nothing good in this pack, really. Rafael Palmeira would have been a Hall of Famer. Almost could guarantee it with his 3,000 hits and 500-plus career home runs, but took steroids and lied about it to Congress, so that uh, that basically was the end of his Hall of Fame candidacy. There's Brett Boone, another steroid guy. That's what he used to look like, and then uh, two or three years later, he's about triple that size, hitting 40 dingers a year. There's a nice Kirby Puckett electric diamond card. It's uh, uh, I don't know. I'm just going to put that on the screen for a second, but I don't have, really have room. There's Sammy Sosa. Of course, Sammy Sosa with his uh, – how many home, career home runs did Sosa have? Like 609 career home runs in the top 10 all time. And Pedro J. Martinez, again, another Hall of Famer. Our next pack up, we have a Archimedes Pozo. Barely remember him. Kind of remember that name. There's Brooks Kieschnick. Was a power-hitting prospect there for a while and never really – you know, made it there. Say Frank Thomas. He played for a little while, but wasn't very good. He actually tried to reinvent himself as a pitcher at age like 40 and come back, but didn't really work out. Would have been cool. Would have been a very cool story. There's Barry Larkin, Hall of Famer. Seen him a couple times. Sandy Alomar Jr. again. All right, here we go. Next pack up. I like how easy these packs are to open. We've got a Duran Kirkreet. Literally no idea who this guy is. Looks like they got him working the uh, jugs gun, though, so I don't know uh, what that's all about. Not a very good picture for your baseball card. to make it look like you're just a scout at best. There's Roberto Kelly. I think he was traded for Paul O'Neill. That trade really worked out for the Yankees. Gary Gaetti, Lee Smith, Hall of Famer. We've got John Valentin again and Bobby Ayala, electric diamond card. So we're down to about probably about nine packs left. Again, thank you very much for watching on this throwback thursday and I, I hope you can check us out on patreon i'll be uploading the awful disastrous 2001 tops 
uh, Throwback Thursday, probably for a tossback Tuesday next week. So check us out. There's Mark Grace being a tough guy. Shut up and play. Uh, Frank DePino had some stories to tell about Mark Grace. Sounds like he wasn't the easiest teammate to get along with. There's Doug Jones. Let's go ahead and check this pack out. Terrell Wade was a nice prospect back then. Never really kind of made a um, mark in the big leagues. A lot of people thought he would join that rotation with Glavin, Maddox, Smoltz, Avery. But nope, didn't really have a Greg Swindell. And Doug Jones once more. We've got eight packs left, it looks like. Make it nine. This is our ninth. And there's eight after this. Hope you guys are having a nice Thursday. It's almost the weekend, which is nice. Weekend means we'll have uh, Face Off Friday for you have to put something together for you for that i'm not sure what i'll do yet for it but saturday showdown coming up as well sean barry and uh, we might have some boom boxes on the horizon they usually come in the first week of each month so i might get those up this weekend as well hope you check our videos uh, hit that subscribe button and click that bell get a little notification i put a video up every single day for you guys love opening cards just fun to open them and talk about them. there's david justice Pat Borders, Ken Caminetti once again, seeing repeats. There's Rob Dibble, Kirby Puckett, non-electric diamond card, Paul Sorrento, and Sid Fernandez. He was a guy I used to hate as well, Sid Fernandez, part of those 88 Mets. Joey Hamilton, again, there's Henry Rodriguez for the second time. With only 270 cards in the set, we're going to see a lot of repeats. There's former Pirates closer and karate expert Jim Gott. 92 pinnacle card he's like flying through the air doing a, a i don't know what kind of kick it is a front kick or something flying jump kick i'll just call it sean green was a very very nice player there's the a-rod card classic alumni uh beckett list is card about five bucks probably not worth that much uh there's calvin pokey reese former bucket right there so we got nice a-rod card there along with johnny damon a couple of Derek jeters and that michael jordan central region card sp might be the best card I would probably call that one the best card. I've, I've literally never seen that card before, so that's kind of exciting. All right, we've got Jermaine Allensworth in here. Let's see what else we can find. There's Kelly again, starting to see some repeats, so I'll go a little bit faster looking for inserts. Big Hurt, Frank Thomas, Bob Wickman, and Pete Inclavilia, who was a, uh, a power hitter, struck out a lot, low average guy. Kind of a, a fun name to say. Got five packs left. On this episode of Throwback Thursday, by the way, we have playlists now for Throwback Thursday and a lot of other uh, videos, by the way. Todd Hollandsworth, former Rookie of the Year. Hope you guys, if you ever feel yourself needing some more uh, videos to check out, Jim Tomey Electric Diamond, make sure you click our playlist at the top of our, like the toolbar on my main page. And uh, I guess I should start linking that in all the descriptions to make it a little easier. Check out the playlist and you can watch Walmart videos. If you're into the Walmart videos, we can have a whole list of those for you. We've got a whole list of the Throwback Thursdays, the new releases. We've got the Target videos in there. Been working on populating those, getting every single video from the last uh, X amount of years in there. Eddie Murray. And we have a Xavier Hernandez and Danny Jackson. Three packs left on this Thursday evening. Bill Van Landingham. They probably literally couldn't fit William on there, so they just went with Bill. Shortened up a little bit. Dave Nelson, another Australian. Bob Welch. I don't think we have any Australian players in the big leagues now. We had Graham Lloyd and Dave Nelson there for a while. Our third, Kirby Puckett and Jody Reed. Two packs left in this 94 Upper Deck video. Let's see what we've got. Paul Sorrento's there. Ryan Hancock's there. Walt Weiss, Electric Diamond Card, Mark Lewis. There's Roger Clemens. Just gave away a couple of his relics in the 75K giveaway. Thank you very much to everybody that took part in that giveaway. We had uh, 1,000 people in the live stream, over 1,000 people hanging out. Uh, if you didn't win a prize in that one, you guys liked it so much, I'll pick out 80 cards. We'll do a giveaway for 80K. We've got a Wayne Gomes, Roger Clemens once more. This is our last pack, by the way. There's Jason Giambi, skinny Jason, Jason Giambi, Kurt Miller, former number one pick of the Pirates there. Dwayne Ward from a closer. We've got Dave Nelson, Don Slot, a couple catchers there. Lee Smith, Hall of Fame closer. And Darren Jackson, the last card there. It's going to be an electric diamond of Greg McMichael. So that'll do it. That's 1994 Upper Deck. First time I ever opened it on the channel. And I must say, I'm pretty happy with the box. Got some nice prospect cards in there. A couple Derek Jeter prospect cards. Those are nice looking cards too with that foil background. Let's check it out. Uh, really cool looking card. And uh, two of those. 
nice Michael Jordan, which I'm going to go look up right now. So thank you very much for watching. Please hit the thumbs up button for me. I'd very, very much appreciate it. Helps the video out. Hope you guys have a great rest of your Thursday, and I will see you all tomorrow. Good night, everybody.